if you've read the book, you know that the word product is always associated with uh, multiplication. So the operation of multiplication is specified by the word product. So if we say we want the product of 3 and 4, we mean we want 3 times 4. Now here's some of the properties of multiplication along with the associated property with addition. So the commutative property for addition, remember it said that A plus B was the same as B plus A. Well, the same idea holds for multiplication. A times B is the same as B times A. So when I multiply the order of the numbers in the product, it doesn't have any effect on the result. Associative property, remember, had to do with grouping. For addition, we said A plus the quantity B plus C was always the same as the quantity A plus B plus C. Well, the same type of thing holds for multiplication. That is, A times the quantity BC is equal to the quantity A times B times C. So if I'm going to multiply three numbers together, I can group any two of them together and then multiply what I get by the third number, and it will have the exact same outcome. Distributive property has to do with multiplication and addition, and we'll wait and cover that in the next section. In the meantime, let's go to the board and see if we can work with the vocabulary and properties associated with multiplication. First problem, it says write in words, and I have 7 times 9 is equal to 63. I could write it just like that, but I want to try to use that word product. So I'm going to say the product of 9 and 7 is 63. So this is the product of 9 and 7. When I have multiplication, the word that I want to use is product. I could say that 9 times 7 is 63, but it's a little more classy to say the product of 9 and 7 is 63. Here's our next problem. We want to write in symbols the product of 0 and 6 is 0. Well, the product of 0 and 6 is what I get when I multiply 0 times 6. Is translates to equal 0. So this is the statement in symbols that means the same thing as this written in words. The product of 0 and 6 is 0. Problem number three, I want to identify the product and factors. Well, each of these numbers right here is a factor in this product. So 12 is the product of 2 times 2 times 3, and so we can also call this the product. It just hasn't been multiplied out, actually. So the product of 2, 2, and 3 is 12. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. This is 12 and this is 12. These individual numbers right here are called factors of that product. So 2 is a factor, this 2 is a factor, and that 3 is a factor of that product 12. Here's our next problem. Let's rewrite this using the commutative property. Remember that the commutative property has to do with order, so I'm going to change the order in this product. And instead of writing it as 3 times n, I'm going to write it as n times 3. So the commutative property has to do with the order of the numbers in a product or in a sum if we're working with addition. Problem 5, we want to rewrite using the associative property. And here I have 3 times 4 times n, where 4 and n are grouped together. The associative property tells me I can change the grouping, so I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times 4 where they're grouped together, all that times n. So I haven't changed the order of the numbers in the product, but I've changed the grouping from 4 and n to 3 and 4. When I do that, I've used the associative property. Next, I want to solve some equations just by inspection. 9 times n is 72. That tells me that n must be 8. So 9 times n is 72 means that n must be 8, and I know that because I know that 9 times 8 is 72. Now, you want to make sure before you finish this section in the book that you have those multiplication tables memorized. You need to know all the products from 0 times 0 up through 12 times 12. And there's a nice appendix in the back of the book that has 100 common multiplication facts that you can use to sort of practice those. But really, in order to do multiplication and understand multiplication in mathematics, you need to have memorized those products in the multiplication table. Here's another equation. 0 equals n times 5. So the product of n with 5 comes out to be 0. That means that n can only be one number, and that is the number 0 itself. So the only way to get 0 with multiplication is to multiply by 0. 0 is a special property. It has that special property, and you'll see that that's useful uh, if you go on in mathematics. Two more problems. Let's multiply. 3 times 100. 
I'm going to go to the definition. That multiplication means repeated additions. So this is 100 plus 100 plus 100. When I add those up, I get 300. So 3 times 100 is 300. Well, that means that I can, if I want, just multiply 3 times 1 and just attach two zeros to it if I want to do a little shortcut with this kind of multiplication. So if it was 5 times 100, I'd go 5 times 1 is 5 and just attach two zeros. Now let's use that same idea with this last product here, 4 times 600,000. I'll multiply 4 times 6, and that gives me 24. And then I'm just going to write on the end five zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have a comma there and a comma there. 4 times 600,000 is going to be 2,400,000. And I simply do this by multiplying 4 times 6 to get 24, and then counting the number of zeros here and attaching those same numbers right here. Now, in the next section, we'll take a more detailed look at multiplication. In the previous section, we multiplied just single-digit numbers. What we want to do now is multiply a little bit larger numbers, and to do that, we need what's called a distributive property. Written it over here on the board, the distributive property says that if A, B, and C are any three numbers, then A times the quantity B plus C is the same as A times B plus A times C. That is, I can multiply A times B and A times C separately, add what I get together. That will be the same thing I'll get if I add B and C first and then multiply what I get by A. Now, that will help us explain multiplication with numbers that have more than one digit. Let's go to our first problem. I want to multiply 9 times 43, and since I haven't done this kind of multiplication before, I'm going to rewrite this as 9 times 40 plus 3. So I write the 43 in expanded form as 40 plus 3. Now I'll apply the distributive property to this and multiply 9 times 40. And I'll do that by multiplying 9 times 4 to give me 36. And then I'll just attach that 0 to it. And then I'll multiply 9 times 3 and get 27. Now if I add 360 and 27, I'll get 387. So that's the answer to that problem, doing it this long way. But I don't want to have to do it this long way every time. So I'm going to try to look at some, for some shortcuts to this. So first of all, let's try a shortcut over here where I multiply 9 times 40 plus 3. And I multiply 9 times 3. That gives me 27. Then I multiply 9 times 40. That gives me 360. And I'll write it just below the 27 so the 1's columns line up, the 10's columns line up, and so on. Now I'll simply add 7 plus 0 is 7, 2 plus 6 is 8, and then I have 3. So 387, there's that same answer that I got before in this kind of shorthand form of this multiplication. Now what I want to do is go over here and shorten that shorthand form even more by writing it as 43 times 9. Now this time what I'll do is say 9 times 3 is 27. I'll write down the 7 and carry the 2. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 2 is 38. And so there's our real shorthand form of multiplication where one of the numbers has more than one digit. 9 times 3 is 27. I write down the 7 and carry the 2. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 2 is 38. And you see that corresponds to this. Here's my 7 that I wrote down. There's the 2 that I carried. And there's the 36, plus 2 is 38. So this is the form we're going to use when we do multiplication by hand. Of course, you can do all of these problems on a calculator, but if we have to do them by hand, we're going to use this shorthand form. Here's our next problem. 50 times 19. This 0 will just attach to the end of the answer. 5 times 9 is 45. Carry the 4. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. So 950 for that, and I get that by writing this 0. Then 5 times 9 is 45. I write down the 5, carry the 4. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9, and so I have 950. Now, I could write that out the long way if I want, but that's going to give me the same answer, 950. Our next problem, I have 97 times 16. <clears throat> so I'm going to rewrite this as 97 times, and I'll write 16 in expanded form as 10 plus 6. Now, 97 times 10 is going to be 970. I'll just add a 0 to the end of it. 97 times 6, let's write that over here. 6 times 7 is 42. Carry the 4. 
6 times 9 is 54, plus 4 is 58. So that gives me 582. I'll add those up. 0 plus 2 is 2. 7 plus 8 is 15. Carry the 1. 9 and 1 is 10, plus 5 is 15. So I get 1,552 using a combination of the distributive property here where I distribute this 97 over the 10 plus 6. So 97 times 10, 970. 97 times 6, I use this shorthand form of multiplication. That gives me 582. I add those together, I get 1,552. Now let's see if we can write this in an even more shorthand form. I'm going to write 16 times 97 like this. 6 times 7 is 42, carry the 4. 6 times 9 is 54, plus 4 is 58. So there's that 582 that I got by multiplying 6 times 97. Next, I want to go to the 1 and multiply it times 97, but it's in the tens column. So I'm going to put a 0 for a placeholder in the ones column. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 9 is 9. And look, I get the exact same two numbers, 582, 970 that I got over here. Now I'll add in columns, I get 2. 8 and 7 is, is uh, 15. Carry the 1, and then 5 and 1 is 6, and 9 is 15. So 15, 52 again for that answer, and this is the most shorthand form of that long multiplication. Uh, so I multiply by the 6 first, then I put a 0 down for a placeholder, and I multiply by the 1. Let's look at another problem. This time I want to multiply 135 times 2,468. And so what I'm going to do is erase this right here so I have a little room. We already know what the answer to that is. Okay, 5 times 8 is 40. Put down the 0, carry the 4. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 4 is 34. Write the 4, carry the 3. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3. 23. I write the 3, carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Next, I want to go to the 3 and multiply. It's in the tens column, so I'm going to put a 0 in the ones column. 3 times 8 is 24, carry the 2. 3 times 6 is 18, and 2 is 20. Write the 0, carry the 2. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Write the 4, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, and 1 is 7. Now, I'll move on to the 1. It's in the hundreds column, so I'm going to put placeholders of 0 in both the tens column and the ones column, and then 1 times 8 is 8, 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 4 is 4, and then 1 times 2 is 2. Now, I'll simply add in columns and get 0. 4 and 4 is 8. 3 and 8 is 11. Write the 1 carry the 1. 2 and 1 is 3, and 4 is 7, and 6 is 13. Carry the 1. 1 and 1 is 2, and 7 is 9, and 4 is 13. Carry the 1. 2 and 1 is 3. So I get 333,180. 180. And I do this by this long form of multiplication. Now we could check this on a calculator. You'll get exactly this same answer. I multiply by the 5 first, then by the 3, and then by the 1, writing the number in the 1's column and carrying the next number to the next column if I need to. Let's work one last problem here that involves, uh, with, that's a word problem. Here we go. A family decides to drive their compact car on vacation. They figure it will re require um, a total of 130 gallons of gas for the trip. If each gallon of gas will take them about 22 miles, how long is the trip they're planning? So they have estimated it's going to take 130 gallons of gas to go on this trip, and their car gets about 22 miles to the gallon, or every gallon of gas takes them about 22 miles. So what I want to do to find the total number of miles they're planning on going on the trip is multiply 22 times 130. So I have 22 times 130. And I'll do this multiplication. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. I move on to this 2, put a 0 to hold that 1's place. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. Now I add in columns. It looks like the trip that they are planning is going to be about 2,860 miles. 
So a simple application of multiplication with whole numbers. Um, and that's a look at multiplication with whole numbers, including this long form of multiplication that requires some carrying from of digits to the next column.